The United States and its allies are facing the extremist fighters of ISIS with bombs and bullets in Iraq and Syria. But many of those fighters started in Europe, the U.S., and here. Citizens that turned away from their normal lives to a twisted illusion of righteous heroism achieved by murder and suicide. Soon, Canada is expected to unveil a strategy to turn them back before they join the ranks of ISIS. But as Adrian Arsenault explains, some Canadians who've lost sons to this war are not waiting. As the numbers swell and the names and faces become public, the pressure on Canada to do something about radicalization grows. Sure, there's a plan in the works, but it's not ready yet, which puts Canada behind those in Europe who've been trying to tackle the problem openly for years. Consider Germany, which has a long history of confronting extremism of all kinds. One organization called EXIT has had success deprogramming neo-Nazis as if plucking them from a cult. Sorry, neo-Nazis. Danke und des Eus. Peace. It now has an offshoot program called Hayat, which means life in Arabic. Using the same approach it applied with neo-Nazis, Hayat's aim is to de-radicalize would-be jihadis, try to pull them back from the brink. With any extremists, jihadists, neo-Nazis, gang members, white supremacists, the groups keep their hold on the minds of their members by pulling them away from their old lives. It's total immersion in hate under the guise of giving them belonging and power. It becomes a trap. Hayat works with families to try to slowly break that pattern, show them alternatives. This is the program that briefly played host this summer to Calgarian Christiane Boudreau. Her son Damien died as an ISIS fighter in Syria earlier this year. She's now trying to be the first to start a Hayat chapter in Canada, find the right funding and staffing, give other parents the help she says she never got. The difference with Hayat, rather than reacting, and sending people, you know, and just reacting and pressing charges. The difference is it works with the family closely to connect with that youth. Boudreaux's launching ahead because she says she can't wait for Canada to act. Truth is, Canadian officials have been studying some of the same European programs, also visited Hayat. The Dutch approach has been in the sights too. The Netherlands see radicalization as a socio-political problem and try to help these young men and women reconnect with communities before they act out. The Danish boldly use returning and reformed jihadis to steer others away from the murderous path. And almost all European countries apply strategies that lean on families, mothers in particular. That feels instinctively right to Boudreaux and Dominique Bons, a French mother who lost her son and his half-brother. Like Boudreaux's son, Nicolas and Jean-Daniel Bons both converted, hardened, joined ISIS and were killed. After sharing their stories, the women are now forming an international mothers group. But we can at least be the types of people to go out and speak out and reach out to other families or create the awareness mm -hmm. so that they can watch on their own and do whatever they can do. The British would agree. They've invested in a Mothers and Families Against Violent Extremism program. There are splashy public outreach campaigns and families are the focus. If you know someone who is planning to go to Syria, please reach out. You do have a power to protect those whom you love. Britain's National Coordinator for Counterterrorism is Helen Ball veteran police officer, hostage negotiator, who argues steering some away from radicalization doesn't just happen at the end of a heavy legislative stick. She knows of Canada's concerns and Boudreaux's search for answers. So I think she's right that the best way to go about this is to enlist the support of mothers and women. I think they have enormous influence in families. They're often the people who spot the signs and symptoms that maybe someone's thinking of going, traveling abroad, getting involved in fighting. There's a UK hotline to report those at risk of being radicalized, and it tends to be mothers who call. But the challenge is convincing more families to trust they can reach out. Giving a message to uh, women in families that if they came forward and told the police or somebody else in the community about their fears, that that didn't mean that their, their loved one was going to get arrested automatically. It did mean they could meet somebody in confidence, very discreetly, 
discuss what they were worried about, and then they can be put in touch with someone who's working as part of our prevent um, strategy. Ball and Canadian police are formally sharing ideas, but no one knows yet to what end. Christiane Boudreau isn't waiting to find out. Her work has already begun. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Toronto.